you choose lawn and garden chemicals, it's really important to read those labels and to think about not only your needs in your own yard, but to make sure that you don't create a problem in your neighborhood. You might be closer to water than you think. In fact, I found this lovely stream here in this neighborhood, and I thought I'd talk to Josh Hayes from Metro Water Services with Stormwater Division, a little bit about this creek. Sure. This is a seven mile creek, which is an important creek here in Nashville. It's home to an endangered crayfish. It's part of the overall Mill Creek uh, drainage basin. And um, the creek also serves drainage for thousands of acres, approximately 11,000 acres. It also drains approximately 23,000 different properties. Um, so this creek is significant to the neighborhood, and not only from a neighborhood scale, but from a national scale, since it has a federally endangered crayfish. Well, we're very lucky to have this creek, and I know people are happy to live along it. Uh, it looks pretty clean to me. Well, the water looks clean. Um, Unfortunately, Julie, it's the things that you don't see in the water sometimes that are considered pollution in our department. Um, in, in particular, this stream is listed by the um, state of Tennessee as being impaired. It's on the state's 303D list. Um, in particular, it's impaired for nutrient runoff, which nutrients can be phosphorus or nitrogen compounds that, is, that are typically found in fertilizer uh, products. Uh, it's also listed for uh, sediment runoff from construction sites, uh, exposed areas that drain into storm drains that drain to the creek. Uh, it's also listed for uh, pathogens, which is a bacteria that comes up from animal waste. Nutrients occur naturally in our environment. Our, our streams need nutrients. The critters in the streams need nutrients and the plants in the streams need nutrients. It's the unnatural loading that we get from people applying uh, those thousands of acres that drain to the watershed. If one yard in particular may not represent a significant source of pollution, but when you have thousands of, of lots that apply fertilizers that have these nutrients in large scales, when it rains, those nutrients uh, flood the creeks and uh, we have concentration issues that cause uh, typical impacts such as al algae blooms. And when you have an algae bloom, you have literally aquatic life being choked out. The algae uh, suffocates the aquatic life. It draws all the oxygen out of the water. Well, you mentioned siltation and construction sites, but I see neighbors that are digging up their yard. Is that causing a problem? Yes, actually, residential properties can be a significant source of sediment into streams. If you're tilling a garden, if your garden's located right by a drainage feature or a stream, uh, you can cause a lot of sediment to drain into the creek when it rains. If you're regrading part of your yard, if you don't stabilize it with seed and straw before a rain event, all that graded area will wash off into the stream. And a lot of people don't think of sediment as a pollution, but mud, sand, silt, all of that uh, filters out the sunlight. And you, when you have the sunlight filtered out of the water, you don't have aquatic plants that grow. The aquatic plants are needed in the, in the stream so that they provide oxygen to our uh, aquatic life. Uh, sediment can also be a transport mechanism. It can transport nutrients or other forms of pollution. It's basically a vehicle for other pollution. So if I've already fertilized and I have some bare soil there and it rains really hard and runs off into the storm drain, am I okay? It's just going into the sewer, isn't it? No, no. Uh, the majority part of the county, when it rains and it goes into a storm drain, it goes straight to the, the river or a creek. Um, in a lot of cases, it goes through a pipe, which has no filtration whatsoever. It's piped straight to the creek in a lot of cases when it goes into an inlet. Um, so no, it's, it's never good to have excess product going to a storm drain. It's never good to have excess uh, product or disposed of, uh, washed out. A lot of people use the same spray containers to apply pesticides and herbicides as they do with fertilizers. Well, they want to rinse them out before they mix the two. A lot of times they mix them or they wash the, the drains out or the containers out and that goes straight into a storm drain and can be, lead to concentrated amounts of fertilizers and other products going to the creek. If you think of pesticides, a lot of they're designed to kill invertebrate in insects. Uh, a lot of the, the aquatic life and streams, which are essential, such as the Nashville crayfish, is an invertebrate species. So it, depending on the concentration and the amount that's washed into a, a creek, we've actually had calls where pesticides have caused large amounts of crayfish kill. Thankfully, it wasn't the Nashville crayfish, but it can happen. So it's, it's important, especially in this neighborhood, to take extra care in, in washing and in applying herbicides. Now, what if I go all organic? Am I totally out of the woods, so to speak, if I'm using only organic pesticide and organic fertilizers? 
Yeah, uh, it's better. You don't get um, quite the uh, harsh chemicals that are involved, but a lot of people have the misnomer that organic material is safe, especially if it says biodegradable. Uh, but the problem is that is when it degrades, it takes if it's washed into a storm drain, it's going to cause that oxygen to deplete, the oxygen that the national crayfish and other critters need. Uh, it also uh, organic materials such as grass clippings contain fertilizers and other materials that can be washed into the drain and increase it that way as well. If you have a ditch or a stream in your yard and that stream bank is eroding, uh, the best thing that you can do to stabilize it is to add vegetation, add what we call a, a buffer strip to that creek. Um, don't mow right up to the creek bank. When you mow right up to the creek bank and you take away trees, the trees' roots act as uh, gloves holding that soil in. Uh, so when you take away trees and shrubs, you're losing your ability to keep that bank stable. And erosion is a significant source of sediment in our creeks. So this year and throughout the gardening season, make sure and remember it may be your lawn, but it's all of our water.